Wave at five, it's offer review. And we're gonna kind of go through the things that are going to be needed to hoard uh, for next week. And big shout out to uh, Brotherhood of the Storm, Stormwatch. This is my favorite infographic. Uh, April 14th, spend ISO 8 energy on 420. So you're gonna wanna save your ISO 8 uh, green energy for the 20th. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm trying to save these right here. It looks like I already collected one. And I'm saving this right here inside of the strike pass for sure. Then also on the 20th is save raid credits for the special offensive event. Uh, so what I'm doing is I am saving up to milestone 14 on this current raid season. You actually are, I, I claimed the ones after milestone 14, but the first 14 actually will count towards the event uh, on the 20th. Then we're also saving gold ores, boy. Not a lot, and I'm pretty starved for gold. Uh, open gold orbs also on 420. Save gold orbs for opening shopping spree, which is going to be kind of a weird event because it looks like the rest of the event is going to be pretty easy, but capped. Uh, and then the the part that is uncapped is going to be opening gold orbs. And of course, that's going to be tied to a leaderboard, which is effectively just an auction. Uh, then also on the 20th, uh, wait to claim your daily objective and donate to your alliance until forces of nature event starts on the 20th and then lastly spend campaign energy so uh like save all of your mails that have campaign energy and you can start using them on the 20th now there is another recap right here also from brotherhood of the Storm, just kind of outlining the calendar of events uh right now we've got the bucky barn showcase running right now uh, which uh, just started today, which if you've got what, a gear tier 13, you, know, you can farm those nodes a little bit and uh, get training materials, which I'm currently hoarding again, right? Where there's actually an event right now uh, for opening training materials. So you can do that if you want. We've got the Blitz. I did the Blitzes and I collected all of the uh, milestones on the Blitz. Spoils of War, Seven Day Alliance War, Milestone Battle in War. And, and we're going to talk about that and now. Uh, please consider spending the spoils of war event requirements. So that's an event. It started now, but the wars don't start until tomorrow. Uh, the spoils of war milestone event started later today. Require everyone in alliance to make 10 completed attacks each pre per war to finish. A few reasons why it's too much to ask for, especially for an event that feeds into the monthly. Treating doesn't count or availability result in lost battles due to bad RNG. Many alliances aren't full. And I think that's where this is going to be the biggest problem. Not everyone alliance will be available to play. Life happens and have uh, completion hinge on everyone else uh, being available to compete. All 10 of their free attacks is a little too much to ask. Now, there is a way of doing this, and this may or may not work for you, but I thought this was a reasonable suggestion. Uh, just throw 10 free attacks into one team and lose them all. It takes about three minutes. So, uh, if not retreating but if you just wanted to throw your minions in against a gamma and do that 10 times real quick then it'll at least help out for the vent so I, I think where this is going to be a a big problem is for alliances that are not a, uh, not full and so this is going to penalize people that care about the month-long event uh that are in alliances where that aren't or they're in alliances where some people maybe don't care about wars or don't participate in wars. And it seems like the general intention that we've been getting for Scopely for a better past the last 18 months or so is that they really want um, to foster this keeping up with the Joneses mentality. And they want everyone to be in an alliance where everybody plays the same and everybody spends the same and everybody has the same level of activities. And they've created these situations where it creates frustration if you're a, uh, you know, let's say you're a semi-serious player, but you're in a casual alliance. And when other players are not taking the game as seriously as you would, uh, then it creates frustrations and it kind of forces people to look into other alliances. And I, I believe that there's like a, a financial incentive for them to do that. Uh, and so it's just a little bit off-putting. Uh, but I do think that there is kind of like a way of getting around this. And even if you have people that, uh, you know, you can do up to 14 attacks per person. So maybe there's a way of, of rigging this if you're, but it's the problem is the thing is this, you have to work with your alliance and you have to have an active alliance or a semi full alliance for this to be 
uh, to get to the end and get it all done. It is what it is. I'm not a fan of... Uh, it just feels like they've gone out of their way to destroy casual alliances or people playing with their friends or real like family members or people they work with and then you become a competitive player and then you're like can't play with your friends because they don't take the game as seriously as you yeah that's a thing in this game doesn't feel good um so that that is a thing then the other thing that's the spoils of war then legendary red hulk is also a, an item of uh a discussion right here disappearance of morgan Le Fay. last seven scourges have been the following have we seen the last of Morgan since he had most advanced rogue necks? Are players out of luck? So yeah, there are some questions. It seems like we haven't had Morgan Le Fay in a while. Uh, we've got the legendary event, Red Hulk, uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, we've got Blitz with Kingpin, Cosmic Crucible. Then all of the events start on Thursday the 20th. And you can see there's four different lines here. Shopping spree, five day, solo milestone open gold orbs, and then buy special offers with cores, war credits, and raid credits. And my understanding is that part of the event is supposed to be pretty easy. Like, I, that's my understanding. It's going to be this open gold orb part is going to be the uncapped part that feeds towards the leaderboards. Uh, and that's where, like, the top 150 people are going to get access to red stars on uh, quicksilver like some of them are gonna be four some are gonna be five and quicksilver is supposed to be a dark promotion credit character forces of nature also starting on the 20th five day solo mustang earn green guardians for more alliance donations daily objectives and free claims so that's uh what we talked a minute ago about uh saving your daily object your alliance donations radioactive run five day web milestone spin iso eight campaign energy so that's where we talked about saving uh this right here for sure and then uh special offensive four day solo milestone spend campaign energy and earn raid credits so we did cover that already as well uh wrapping this up uh new mojo pass is going to start on friday and then a quick rumble blitz and then we've got our uh reoccurring monthly events and this one's for training materials for the flash event back to boot camp all right let's go and talk about no first time rewards for new catalysts have changed difficulty. So they did remove the level 95 restriction, which I thought was good. Uh, but it was pointed out that there were no first time completion bonuses. And at this point of the relationship, both partners are just staying together out of convenience or laziness, waking up every morning, secretly hoping the other will not are representing each other and doing the absolute bare minimum in order to maintain some semblance of consideration. All right. That's the salt I came here for Reddit for. I love it. We've got more salt. We got some more salt. Here we go. My st Marvel Strike Force realization. Long ago, I finally realized what the game is. Riddled with bugs, FOMO, bad communication. It is nice to point out flaws to the depth, but at, w at this point, why? They're not going to change, and I think the player base as a whole should understand that. If they needed to change to keep making money, they would have by now. And I agree with this. So there was in, uh, last week, we talked about the trust Thermocline, and this was kind of a uh, mind-blowing uh, concept, which you're which you're welcome to Google if you're interested in knowing what this thus thermocline, because it really changed my perception. Basically, uh, the, th the the trust thermocline is a situation where companies' data has lied to them, uh, like they were able to do uh, price increases and kind of shitty things to their customers and the data suggested to them that, well, they kept paying and they stuck around and, and because of some cost fallacy, right? People will take it up until a point. And, and what the thrust thermal client suggests is that there is a very steep cliff and a threshold where, where trust is lost and people disappears in droves and the data lied to the developers. And if the developers don't pay attention why they have some semblance of trust with the community, it disappears from them very quickly. And the, the, the article was written or the Twitter post was written by somebody that is called in after the fact to try to salvage these situations is like, oh, you guys should have paid attention. And that's what I'm trying to say is if the developers are only looking at their data and spending patterns, 
they might get blindsided uh, by this concept called the trust thermocline. And uh, Demoline pointed out to me, it seems to provide a specific experience-based theory for several of my gen uh, for my general idea of why I thought your past mentions of how expertise scopely probably has to determine their pricing doesn't recognize failability and inertia in thinking. So I hope that's not true, but I, uh, I, I like that, that everybody's just going to disappear at once. Like to Don O'Mac, you know, they hit a wall and they're gone just like that. And people are going to leave in droves. Um, I also hope that maybe somebody at scopely is aware of this concept and tries to fix things now rather than later when it's too late. They know exactly what they're doing. They have analysis. People in play make decisions purposefully. Well, I hope they understand this, this trust thermocline idea and, and don't let their own numbers lie to them. Uh, this game has become much more fun since I stopped caring about bugs and everything else because if you expect bad and get semi-decent, that's a win. Uh, that's the salt I come here for Reddit. Let's, let's get to some more salt. I like this salt before we deal with the offers. I like the salt. No light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I come to Reddit for salt, man. I played for about two years now and been happy just playing my own way. I don't spend money and just try to unlock as much characters as I can or want. But lately, even doing that has turned into a chore. And all I see to jump through hoops for the game's developers, do this, oh, that, sorry, I can't do that without having character X. And boy, that has been a thing that they've done recently where there are events that are locked unless you just bought the character which i don't think is a good trend oh sorry now you have character x you need them at level you know he's talking about gear tier 13 right and and luckily the rewards on this specific mention of this have not been there's something though and i think it's annoying to see other people that you know spent money and upgraded characters to gear tier 13 to get the rewards they're not even if it's just training materials but do they understand that that that's just a bad feeling and it feels bad and then lastly, trying to figure out what to do or when to do it is almost impossible. Save orbs one minute, open them the next, and all the fun has been sucked out. Yeah, I, di I just don't feel like myself this whole, I mean, this whole min-maxing with hoarding and spending and hoarding and or hoarding and saving and then, uh, and then using all the items. Um, you know, whatever their stance on, on hoarding is it in my opinion maybe they had a, a specific stance against hoarding and incentivizing hoarding maybe it was different three years ago uh, we had some small insight to that at one point uh, it seems to me that they actually have embraced hoarding and it's a part of the game and using the manipulating the in, uh, the, the mailbox system to get extra rewards and either you like it or you don't personally i think it's just kind of uh, annoying all right, and then this this is a um, also I'm gonna try to make a nuisance point a nuisance nuanced point here. So stick with me on this one because I do agree with this post, uh, but for different reasons. Last three teams release highlight exactly where this game is heading. Rebirth, trash outside of raids. I'm gonna come back to that. Master Veil, trash outside of Crucible. Hell, not even the top dogs within Crucible, but there that's a different post. Invaders, trash outside of raids. They've been making teams more and more tailored to specific game modes while now but these three highlight how bad it's gotten great teams used to be very solid investment across all game modes uh immediately following their releases particularly in war symbiotes great x-men astonishing so on blah 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 uh Re rebirth invaders they're saying they're complete trash and i, I i'm gonna ex I, I i understand why they're saying this but i think it's for a different reason and the problem is different than what this post is saying uh, are there are there because they're right but for a different reason so and it's a nuanced case i'm going to make here also trying to find a plus for uh one million master uh evil team in war sucks that we can put so many resources in brand new teams and barely usable at their peak value outside of a very specific game mode what the hell is everyone doing with these teams of war reshuffling all but fury and king uh yeah he's actually kind of right uh a lot of the teams that i've seen use in war where the rest of the team is kind of on the bench and King is getting, uh, but a lot of people don't know this, uh, but rebirth. And I only have one video to prove this, um, actually can beat gamma in war, but at ungodly levels under certain situations. I mean, here's a screenshot and a video of a very, 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 very large rebirth, uh, taking out a gamma. Uh, and it wasn't complete gamma. It was a gamma with Archangel, and this is not a complete rebirth uh, with Red Guardian. And and the problem is that 
this is mostly correct. They're trash outside of raids. And and they there are plenty of situations and people that'll say, hey, I did this with Rebirth in war and they are great. But the stipulation is that they took them to seven yellow stars and spent a lot of money and they have seven red stars and used gold promotion credits. They took them to gear tier 17. They took them to blue ISO four. They spent the gold to get them to level 95. Those things are right now for like players like myself and probably people watching this video for most players doing those absurd things and upgrading teams to their max potential is reserved for the horsemen and the horsemen teams. And there's just simply not enough resources to take a team like Rebirth up to a level where they're useful against those teams that are stacked. That's the problem. There's so many bottlenecks that I don't have my Rebirth at seven yellow stars. Maybe I have them at five. If I did have them at at, at seven yellow stars, I'm not going to have them at seven red stars. If, if I do have them geared up, I, at best, I'm going to have them at geared up at maybe 15 or 16. I don't have the gold to take them to level 94 or 95. I, I don't have enough blue ISO 4 to put on these teams. There's blue ISO 3. Uh, to find out if these teams are good or not requires insane amount of resources. That how could we possibly know? Like, and is it worth even finding out, right? Like... Uh, because it's a trap. I, I don't want to dump that kind of resources in a rebirth for what? But to get any kind of like value on those care those teams and to have a situation where you can actually do something with them requires absurd amounts of resources. So I think what's happening, and my guess is this, is that Scopely is building these teams like Rebirth, Masters of Evil, Invaders. And they're testing them at some, like they test them in various game modes and um, they're testing them at equal levels versus equal levels. And they get some sort of reasonable uh, stats on the team, but that doesn't work in the real world because we've got our gamma dark hold teams up here and the absurdity amount of resources to get them up this high. We're never going to dump into these 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 raid teams not right away and it makes the raid teams look like trash everywhere outside of their intended game mode that's my take on the situation i think this post is accurate uh, i think the problem is that the, the bottlenecks in this game are absurd and there's really no way of knowing if rebirth is trash inside outside of raids because why would you upgrade them as much as your dark hold your gamma because you i i can't there's not enough to go around not enough to go around. Let's get to offers. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Um, Symbiote Soldier uh, offer. I bought this offer here, right? Uh, so basically, five US dollars is 375 cores. So if you're a purchaser of power cores, what you're getting for 75 cores is 10 shards and four premium orbs. Premium orbs may be garbage for you or useful for you. Depends. I don't get a lot of good use out of premium orbs. Uh, the other thing is, is that this orb right here is not in the game. So some people like the RNG aspect of it. They rather have the orb instead of the guaranteed 10 shards. Technically, I believe these orbs average like 9.3. Yes, there's a chance to get, you know, one in 2000 chance to get 180 shards. But as of the time of making this video, uh, these orbs are not in game. So if you buy this, uh, check to see if these orbs are actually openable. If you buy it, uh, eventually to develop the developers are aware and they're working on it apparently you can then open it but uh my suggestion is uh mathematically you get more doing that so i just did that and take the guaranteed 10 shards instead of getting six i don't want six or eight you know what i mean but do what you got to do um also if you've unlocked uh iron fist world war ii um you get you get these offers here which are average offers nothing super special uh, but if you do open these offers, be sure to save and you do purchase them. Be sure to save your gold for the 20th for the gold orb opening event. Uh, training materials you can open now, right? There's two training material offers, uh, one that's $30 or one that is $10. And you can open the training materials, uh, training orbs right now. 
uh, for the current event. Uh, then we've got right here Black Panther 1 million, which is now $5 for 50 shards. Now he is uh, farmable in, in small pieces a little bit every day on the new uh, node that they open. So you can get a little bit of him. Uh, so I don't know. Now this right here, it seems like a lot of nothing. But the way that I look at it is if let's say you buy this offer twice and I don't think I'm going to buy it. Uh, but if I did buy this offer twice, I spent $10, then I would have enough for one elite four. And then I would have 10 basic orbs, which I would save until they have 10x, um, 10x dark promotion credits uh, and then open them. And then you get some fragments of this and maybe this is enough to push you over the top to open an orb. So reasonable enough. Uh, it just seems like um, uh, the analogy that somebody used on a different offer, it sounds like it's like buying a, a box of batteries and it comes with two triple a's and one double a one c and one d and one nine volt and you're looking at it, it was like wow that's kind of weird but okay uh, it's just a lot a little bit of everything right um sunfire 50 character shards for five bucks and then agatha what a scam agatha's been man she's been out for more than a year and they are just being so stingy it feels like icarus and emma like some of these characters they just don't release uh not a fan and then we've got uh, Spider-Man Noir, uh, which they've also made available in a node, so I don't know if that's a good deal. And then lastly, we've got Nakia. I'd be happier if this was at $5. Lastly, this is going to blow your mind. Uh, let's do it as a giveaway. I really hope you liked today's video. Because if you did, you are in luck. For every single person that likes this video, you will be getting the privilege and the opportunity to spend one thousand dollars one thousand us dollars on the abundance of ultra cores offers what is actually going on with this game one thousand dollar offer Holy moly. All right, that's it for now. Bye.